Garrett McNamara foi uma das figuras do ano ao surfar a maior onda de sempre na Praia do Norte, na Nazaré. Foram 30 metros de muita água e muita coragem para sobreviver a um desafio quase inimaginável. Na companhia da mãe, Garrett está hoje connosco para nos falar desta paixão pelo surf e pelas ondas gigantes. Hello Garrett, thank you for coming to RTP. How did it all start? I was about 16 in Hawaii. A friend of mine uh, forced me to go out. He's like, come on, you're going out with me. And I'm like, no. He's like, here, take this board, come with me. And I'm like, and I paddled out. Luckily, he gave me the right board, and I caught every wave I wanted. From that day forward, I lived for big waves. When did you first heard of Nazareth here in Portugal? About five years ago, uh, Dino from Nazareth sent me an email. So. Garrett, I have a wave in my town. I think you might want to surf. Come, you, you, you might be interested in this picture, and I opened the picture. And I'm very interested. How this do I get? How do, I, first thing I asked him, is there any jet skis? <laughs> and the answer was yes. He said, about an hour away, I think we can get some jet skis. <laughs> That was the answer. And what was your first experience in Nazareth? Did it accomplish your uh, expectations? Far exceeded my expectations. You when I first see. came here, I didn't have any expectations. I came in just, just, just taking in and see what there was. And once I got here, I was like, my jaw dropped and newfound love, new home, home is, away from home. Is Portugal your new home right now? I've spent more time in Portugal than anywhere else in the world for the last two years. What do you think of Portuguese people? Terrible. Why? <laughs> <laughs> the food's too good. They're always smiling. I mean, <laughs> Portuguese people are awesome. Really great to work with and great to hang out with. It's like they're, all the people of Nazareth are my family now. How scary is to face such a wall of water right above you? I wasn't afraid at all, but all I was thinking was make it. You gotta make this one. If you eat it, if you fall right where I was on that wave, you could end up on the rocks and the jet ski can't really get you in there. What's the secret to get out from that monster? Because uh, the wave swallows you. Yeah, you just gotta focus. Stay focused, stay concentrated on the moment. Watch where the board's going. Make sure you're doing the right thing. You gotta kind of know you're gonna make it. You never lost uh, your uh, senses, you never fainted during uh, an experience so radical like this one? Never. I've always um, had all the wipeouts that I've had. I've had a lot of really bad wipeouts, but I've always been comfortable. I credit that to my training. I train really hard with my lungs and I do a lot of hold my breath exercises. So when I hold my breath underwater, it's, it's always been easy for me. How long do you need to get and hold your breath during the, the coming out from the wave? Is it too long? It's about 15 to 30 seconds on average, but then if you go two waves, it can be up to two minutes. Up to two minutes? It requires a lot of training. Yeah. Did you ever get hurt? Broke my back, broke my foot, broke my rib, broke 
bones all over, um, cuts from head to toe, scraped my whole leg off in Tahiti with all the meat gone. Um, this, this, this reef here, it almost took my eye out, but just left a piece of sea urchin in there instead. Um, okay, this list goes on. I got cuts from head to toe, thousands. But you never gave up. Why? It's all part of the fun. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. As long as I don't break bones, I don't mind. Sprains and breaks, are, they keep me out of the water. Cuts, I just glue them up and go again. I don't use stitches, I just glue them. Because we bend this hard on the east. What does your mother think about your radical experience? Well, she's been asked this question over and over again on this trip, and all I hear is, well, when he was 12, I gave him to God, so I just don't worry about it. So I guess that's, she just gave me to God, and the rest is up to him. What's your feeling about your uh, son's love towards these giant waves? Uh, I think it's fabulous. It's uh, he's been able to achieve a lot through it and accomplish what he set out to do. I always want his number one love to be our Heavenly Father, but he's chosen the way to, uh, it's been a wonderful career for him. Do you usually watch no, when I, he's underwater? I watched him for years and years, and then when he started doing the biggest waves, they were on other islands, Maui and uh, Maverick, so I, I didn't watch until I came here. He showed me the waves that he was serving here. Well, I, I really didn't like it. You know, I never wanted, minded seeing him uh, in Hawaii or anything, but when I saw the Navare, it just looked, I mean Nazare, it looked uh, scary. scary. Yeah, you I never, would close my eyes if he was on the way. You never asked him to leave uh, and to stop the Oh, movies. no, no, no. The members of my family thought, he can't do that, you know. He's got a family. He can't you know, jeopardize his future. Life is full of jeopardy. It's more dangerous to cross the street. Garrett, uh, how about new surfers? Is your experience uh, attracting uh, new surfers all over the world to this kind of uh, surfing? Uh, it takes a special breed of person to be a big wave rider. And there's only a handful of us that do it for a career, but there's thousands that do it for fun, for the love of it. And um, I think it'll definitely attract a lot more of my friends will come here. I would hope to attract people to accomplish their dreams and find their passion and focus on that as a way of life, whatever their passion is. Uh, I hope that I try and inspire people to do what they're passionate about because I love big waves, I live for big waves, and that's what I do for a living. It would be nice to see more people do what they're passionate about. Normally the surfers, uh, they do it uh, in a group, uh, there are a lot of other surfers in the water. Uh, normally you do it alone, do you feel alone when you are experiencing the big waves? Well, when we're towing, we actually, it's two, it takes two because you're a partner, and then we usually have a second ski. If everything is prepared properly, we have a backup ski. Sometimes we'll go alone, and it's me and my friends, so 
We'll be out in the middle of nowhere, just screaming at the top of our lungs, happy. No cameras, no other people, no nothing. Just us having the time of our life. And um, yeah, I just love it. Do you have uh, any special advice to the ones that would like to try the same you do? Definitely uh, work your way up, one step at a time, small wave, medium waves to big waves. There's people that start and one year later they're riding 40 foot waves. It's very rare, but it does happen. I wouldn't recommend doing it that way, but if you're hungry enough and you want it bad enough, you can go from starting to surf this year, right now, today, and you can ride a 40 foot wave one year from now, even quicker if you wanted to really bad, but I wouldn't recommend doing it that way. I recommend working your way up slowly and then seeking advice from other big wave riders or other surfers, email them, find them in person, track them down, figure out training program. I mean, it's a science and it's well thought out, well planned out, and it's, we don't just go in there and just go ride big waves. We do a lot of behind the scenes work. Uh, is there any, anyone in the world circuit that uh, you would like specially to invite? Uh, to do so, like Kelly Slater, for example? We actually, Kelly came, and I've surfed Nazareth with Kelly. Uh, I invited him and he surfed it. The first time I came here, I, uh, I told him I was coming, and then he got here right before me, and he emails me, Garrett, I'm in Nazareth, are you here? And I'm like, oh no, I'm coming in two days. He's like, it's really big, it's gonna be big tomorrow. And I'm like, oh, I wish I was there. Well, tell me what it's like. So he emails me, so. It was big and raw and gnarly, and one mistake could definitely be your last. And um, he's right. Uh, what's your next development with the surfboard? With the surfboard? Yeah, is there anything uh, technological that we you are trying to achieve? We actually have a new surfboard. It's a jet surfboard, jet engine surfboard. We won't need a jet ski. We're going to take it out to Nazareth one of these days soon. And see so the board we, has a motor? Yes. And we're going to see if we can ride the jet surfboard on one of those giant waves. Without the jet ski? No jet ski. All by yourself? Yes. When will you try it? Uh, the, the conditions have to be perfect. And the conditions are very fickle. It changes so quick. So I don't know. We'll, but we'll you just, have already the board. The board's sitting there ready. It's waiting for the perfect day. Would you like to hug your son? He's safe here. In Portugal. <laughs> Garrett, thank you very much for this interview. We hope to see you again soon, surfing the monster waves in Nazareth. And then you broke my knees again Was this part of your